Hey nerds, my name is Fuzzus, I'm Fairly Hairy, and I play games, and today I am just building a new character for a new d, &D campaign. I am playing a, uh, the campaign's gonna be level 5. I don't know what pre-made content, if any, it uses. Um, I've decided I'm gonna play Goliath Paladin, because hey, I like playing big, tanky things. Um, my character's name, right now, is Big Rock Sweetleaf. Um, Sweetleaf is kind of the generic halfling, halfling last name that I use for my halfling characters. Um, but uh, Big Rock is a orphaned Goliath who, for all intents and purposes, culturally is a halfling, um, even though biologically he's a Goliath. Uh, so yeah. Um, so my basic idea behind him is like, he's a paladin of like a campfire god, hearth god, kind of, you know, protects the home, protects the party, the civilization, you know, but... Everything that's where like the halfling culture stands for, hospitality, good times, friends and family, all that sort of thing. It, that is that is the god that he is. And it, in my mind it's a god that I don't know if there's because I don't know the setting that we're using per se, um I I may create a god from whole cloth if that's okay. Uh but yeah, basically the, my idea of this god is that this is the god that came around when mortals, humanoids, first, like, gathered in settlements around fires. And this, you know, this is the god that can protect the fire, keep keep the light of life and uh, sentience alive against the things in the dark. So that is my basic idea. Um, we'll get into the mechanics and how that works. He's going to be kind of a country bumpkin. I'm going with a folk hero background. Um, I'm not super happy with his name, but we'll, I'll talk about that more later and see if something else. Um, but let's just dive right in. I'm going to go to my characters. I'm going to create a character. In case you didn't know, there's like a little flashing glowing wizard over here that's... I don't know why you can see him, but normally he's a secret. You can just click in this area and he'll show up and it's like party time or whatever. Um, okay. So I know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, but I will explain things as I go. Our DM is, has said pretty much you can use whatever you want. I'm going to... I'm going to do this after I pick my rig so I don't have to scroll through everything. Our DM is allowing, like, pretty much all the extra content. I am... I don't own much extra content on D&D Beyond, so this is mostly going to be PHP, which is fine by me. Um, I don't think there's much that I want to do outside of the PHP, except for maybe explore some of the different paladins. Um, but I'm fine with just starting off for right now. I am making sure that dice rolling is checked because I do want to be able to roll digital dice. We are rolling for stats. Normally, any game I run, I do point by because I feel like rolling for stats always end up kind of... Um, some people end up more powerful than others, generally, and people can feel like kind of put out of it. I prefer point by. It's balanced. It's just... I feel like it puts everybody in equal foot. A lot of people don't like it specifically for that reason because life's not like that. You bring with certain attributes and, and lacking in others, and you know, that's fine. It's whatever game you want. I prefer point by because I like a level playing field to start out with, but I'm actually kind of excited to do the dice rolling. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens. Okay, optional features. Okay, yeah, I'm just leaving these off for the moment. Um, I don't know how she's going to be running our progression. I'm leaving it on milestone as a default. Um, hit points, it's manual. 
Um, we're doing the first level, you get the full hit dice plus your con modifier, and then every other level, she's giving us the option to either choose the average or roll the die. And um, I like the gambling aspect, so I'm going to roll the die on every level. Uh, all this stuff, as far as I know, is all fine. Uh, we're using encumbrance, coin weight. I don't know how granular we're going to get. I am doing scores top on this. I like the modifiers and the small numbers because that's how it used to be on the old character sheets in third edition where I started. So that's sort of how my brain operates. And I'm going to leave it as public. Uh, anybody can look it up if they want to so you look at my character. You want him to be a Goliath. That race. Okay, real quick, what am I thinking? Why am I doing Goliath? Well, I mean, it's good for Paladin. It's got strength plus one constitution, and the racials are very good. I free proficiency in athletics. Stone's endurance is you uh, once per short or long rest, you can use your reaction to roll a d12, d12 plus con, and reduce the damage that was dealt to you by that much. That's huge a like once per long rest would be good once per short rest is ridiculous a powerful build you count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity and the weight you can push drag or lift it's probably not going to come into play but you know maybe at some point there's going to be a boulder that needs pushing mountain born have resistance to cold damage acclimate to high altitude including elevations above twenty thousand feet uh, resistance to cold, free resistance to cold. I mean, come on, that's it's good. Um, high altitude again is very situational. Um, but uh, you, you never know when you'll need it. So, yeah, Goliaths are very good for what I want to play as. Plus, I like the racial, they're very flavorful. I like the big, strong guys. That's how I roll. Um, class paladin. Uh, I definitely want to play a paladin with this character, like, from the very beginning. Um, it's a little boring, yes, but I, I, I like playing close combat guys. I like playing tanks. Just sue me. Okay. We are going to start at level 5. But before I fill up my paladin stuff i do want to do the abilities first i don't know why they put abilities after class abilities sh should after race abilities should always be the first thing you do, in my mind um so we are generating by manual enroll okay so let's see what fate has for us i do like these things. 15 good uh, 11. Oh, 8. 11. 10. 11. Ugh. And see, this is actually something that I really hate about dice rolling. Look how mediocre this is. Like, my god, this is just... I don't like it, but that's what we agreed to. So that's what I'm doing. Um. Anyway. <sighs> okay. So I do know already. My highest score is going to go in strength because I'm a paladin. Um. My lowest score is going to go in wisdom because he is a folk hero. He hasn't. He's lived in a very tiny village all of his life. Um. I don't know how the setting is going to go here, but um, but for the moment, he is very fresh to the world. Like he doesn't understand much. Um, one of my elevens is going into calm, obviously. Um, one of my elevens is going into charisma. Probably a good chunk of other stuff. Um. Dex and Int. I mean, it it doesn't it doesn't really matter so much. Uh, 
that's it. Now, if I was playing like straight min max, like I would probably dump my decks into. I'd probably put the eight into this because I'm going to be wearing heavy armor. It's not going to be that much of a difference. Um, but I like I like the RP having the low wisdom and uh, I still Paladin's secondary ability. Paladin's secondary ability now is charisma. It used to be wisdom, but yes, this is. So I am going to go ahead and apply these ability scores. Uh, by the way, I do want to say that when I tested out this because I'd never done the rolling before and I wanted to be sure I could do it before I did the video, um, the first number I rolled was an 18. I rolled like 18, 15, 10, 11, 13, 13. Oh, of course that doesn't happen on okay. camera. All right. So, got 17 strength, 11 dexterity, 12 constitution. 10 Intelligence, 8 Wisdom, and 11. Okay. I really want to be able to put more into crit. Live by the dice, die by the dice. Okay. So, anyway, that's done. So, for Paladin. Now let's go through level by level. Um, proficiencies. Okay, my two skills. Um, I want to choose... Uh, insight. Mm -hmm. I want to choose persuasion because I feel like he can, you know, really help people with that. Uh, like he, he's very earnest in his, uh, in his bearing. Um, and I, I want him to be like kind of admirable, like Captain Carrot from the Discworld. Um. I'm gonna go with insight like <laughs> like it hurts the the gamesman in me to take a skill proficiency in a skill that I have a minus one in, but I do feel yeah i I like about him I feel like he would be um okay, all this stuff uh fighting style what am I gonna do for my fighting style? So, defense is just a straight plus one whenever you're wearing armor, plus one to AC whenever you're wearing armor, which is good. It's solid, it's not nothing special, but it's good. Um, dueling, uh, if you're just holding a melee weapon, plus two bonus to damage rolls. I'm not looking to turn into like a big old beefy damage dealer. I want to play this guy like a tank. Great weapon, great weapon fighting. Again, this is a fantastic ability, by the way. Um, uh, again, it's also for a big stealing paladin, which I don't want to do. Protection. This is, when I saw this one, it's like, this is what I want to do for big rock. Uh, when a creature I can see attacks a target other than me that is within five feet of me, I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack. I have to be wielding a shield. I was always planning to wield shield. Um, so this is huge. Uh, spend a reaction and put disadvantage on an attack roll that's targeting a friend that's in melee range to me. So I stick close to somebody who needs protection and protect them. Spell casting, yeah, it's spells rules and the paladin spells and all. Divine Smite, Divine Health, Sacred Oath. So I can do... Mine is going to be the Oath of Devotion. Um, we'll see more in the Oath spells. Um, oath of Vengeance is a DPS one. Um, when, when you're looking to build like a damage paladin. Oath of the Ancients is a weird kind of paladin-druid hybrid. Like a nature paladin. That's not really what I'm looking for here. Um, but Oath of Devotion is a very traditional paladin thing, and it works well for the guy that I have in mind. Um, uh, the spells it gives me protection from evil and good, sanctuary, lesser restoration, zone of truth. Oh, I get zone of truth. 
Beacon of Hope and Dispel Magic, Free Movement, Guardian of Faith, Commune of Flames. Oh, well. I will start being able to cast Zone of Truth, which is something totally new to me. And also, I think, something very in character for, uh, for Big Rock. Like, he's, he's very fresh to the world. He's very innocent. And I think that something like Zone of Truth is something that he would use to make the world make a little more sense to him. Like, if he really felt like he was being lied to, and he would cast that spell to try to figure out what's really going on. Because I feel like he's, he's not dumb. I mean, his intelligence is 11. Um, he's not stupid, he's just innocent. And I think that when he realizes that something isn't right, he's gonna he's gonna turn to his faith and his magic to to do something about it. To learn things about the world that he can't given his own fact. Um Ability score improvements, yes, okay. Uh I do not want feats, I want ability scores. Um I increase two ability scores by one or one score by two. Uh, uh, obviously, I am going to do Strength and Charisma because they are both on the cusp of going up to the next level of the next uh, modifier bonus. Um, and I start with two attacks, which is great. Fantastic. Love it. And the hit points. That, does it like like I feel like it should actually roll the dice for my hit points but it doesn't but I'm level 5 so I know I've got way more than 17 max hit points it's not a big deal if necessary I can do this manually you can always override your hit points and make them whatever you want them to be um, or whatever they actually should be so it's fine. I'll deal with it later. So my final stats at the moment are I've got plus four from strength, plus one to con, plus one to charisma, minus one to wisdom. That's a net of plus five, which is eh, fine. Um, incredibly strong. Uh, wish he was more charming. Everything else, I'm fine. If I was going to do point by, my wisdom would have been eight or nine anyway. Okay, background. Um, I am doing the folk hero background because I do want him. Uh, where the people of your home village regard you as their champion. Um, yes, I do want him to be that kind of person. He's, he's a uh, he biologically he's a Goliath and he's huge and he's imposing and everything, but he is. In his heart, in his soul, he he considers himself a halfling. He's a very tall halfling, but he's a halfling nonetheless. Um, so yes, uh, uh, artisan's tool. I feel like I want to make him a uh, mason, stone carver. Um, that makes sense to me for you know, who he is. Uh, let's see. Rustic hospitality. Uh, the common folk will give me places to hide, rest, and recuperate. They won't risk their lives for me, but I wouldn't expect them to. I would, Big Rock wouldn't allow the common people to risk their lives. For me. That's his job. Okay. Uh, let's see. If someone is in trouble, I'm always ready to lend help. I want to choose that. Um, Let's see here. I do, I like um the strong sense of fair play. I, he's going to get very upset when things aren't right, I think. Um, and you know, that's, that has to, that's part of the low wisdom too, right? Because 
more worldly, more cynical person is like, well, that you know, sometimes it happens and bad things happen to good people. I want Big Rock to be very much, no, why? I don't understand. Why is it like this? I don't like it like this. I'm going to change this. So, yes, I'm adding that. Uh, ideals. Um, none of these make me super happy for him. Um, but I think that respect would be ultimately what he wanted to choose, what I would choose. Um, people need to be allowed to live. It's, you know, live in peace and harmony and contentment. Um, let's see, I don't think he cares that much about the law, freedom. I mean, sure, tyrants shouldn't be allowed to oppress the people, but like, freedom is important to him. But I don't want I want him to be more neutral than chaotic, more neutral. Um, sincerity. He would have a weird relationship with sincerity because there's no good in pretending to be something I'm not. Big Rock would interpret it as there's no point in in pretending to be a Goliath because I'm not a Goliath, right? I, I'm a halfling. I know I'm a halfling. I was born a halfling, raised a halfling. Well, I was born a Goliath, but I was raised a halfling. I've been a, Goliath. I've been a halfling all of my years. I've do halfling culture, halfling things. Um, all my friends are halflings. All my family are halflings. Um, it's just, he is halfling. Like the, there would be no good in him pretending to be Goliath. He really does think of himself as just a really big halfling, even though he is. He's also at the same point, at the same time, very conscious that he's not biologically a halfling. He knows he's not biologically a halfling, but that just makes him work harder at being the best halfling that he can be, if that makes any sort of sense. Um, bonds. Uh, let's see. I protect those who cannot protect themselves. Absolutely. Um, I haven't figured out what I want to do with this backstory yet, and what the, you know, the initiating event to be that compelled him onto his warp, onto his path in life, but I do want him to be like a defender of this village people you know simple folk hero stuff he's, he's a hero he protects people what he does um i have a weakness for the vices of the city especially hard and this i think dovetails really nicely with the idea of his god not only a protector of life and everything but also the fire the bonfire, fire pit, hearth as a place of celebration. Um, you know, halflings like to party, they like to gather, they like to drink and have good times and fun. And, and maybe that has led him to sort of overindulge. And he, in his eagerness to be a part of it and to, uh, and to be a, a good halfling, he maybe gets carried away, especially once the drinking starts. Okay. Character details alignment. Neutral good is still like ideal lifestyle. Uh, this stuff I'm not doing at the moment because, again, I don't know enough about. I don't know enough about the background. I don't know enough about the setting. Uh, I need to talk to my DM some more about it. But yeah. Again, physical characteristics, personal characteristics. Well, the personal ones have already been done. Did all that up. Um, physical stuff is just window dressing. I do need to think about it, but I'm thinking more about the character and uh, the the person who he is and the mechanics more so than his physical. I'll fill it in a bit. Equipment, starting equipment. Uh, choose equipment. Um, let's see here. So he is choosing a martial weapon and a shield. I have decided to go with the warhammer. Um, the longsword is classic, but it doesn't feel right for him. He lives in a small village. 
going to get a sword. Uh, especially living in a uh, halfling village, where is he going to get a sword his size? Um, I think it's much more likely that like he has used his masonry skills. Like, the shield that he has, I, I, I know is not... I haven't run it past it yet, but just from a flavor standpoint. Mechanically, it's the same as any other shield, but I want it to be just like a, a slab of stone that he's worked, like into like some kind of shieldish sort of thing. Um, and the hammer to be similar, um, like a, just a weapon that he has made himself out of like rock, but the hammer, like a big old piece of rock, some, um, Something like rough, but also honest, like him. Um, simple melee weapon. I think that he would probably carry an axe. No, no, we're we're going we're sticking with a regular dagger. I know it's trite, but it, it makes the most sense. In in a world like this. Carry a knife, you eat with it, and sometimes you stab with it. Um, he, he would have the explore pack because his, his religion, I don't feel, is super organized. He's not a priest. He's, he's a dude who lives in a village who's been chosen by his god as a protector. Uh, chainmail and holy symbol. Um, his holy symbol is going to be a. Right, we'll see an emblem. Like I don't know. Do I want it to be like carved on his shield, carved on his? Uh, well, no, it wouldn't be on his armor. Um, but like carved on shield. No, no, I don't like either of those. An amulet that was given to him by, like, maybe his mother and father. You know, it's something that's, like, comically tiny on his huge neck and chest, but something that he is, something that's incredibly dear to him regardless. Because it was given to, it's a symbol of his faith and it was given to him by his family. Um, I think that that, yeah, I like that one. Artisans tools, uh, masons tools, shovel, iron pot, common clothes, gold. That's it. Starting pieces. Okay. Um, she did give us some starting gold and like a bonus magical item. Uh, let's see here. Before I get too much into that though i want to see like the limit that she set on us because it seems like she's being very forgiving with it but she's also telling us don't go nuts um yeah i'll look into that i'll check back in at some point with like the full completed character sheet but i just wanted to put this video together to have a good idea oh i'll take it. just to give an idea of like how i build a character my considerations um, and my mechanical thoughts and everything, and I like, I like making D&D &D characters, I like making videos, so it, um, this is it for now, our first session, I believe, is going to be on Sunday, um, which is two days from, two. so yeah, we will see what happens then, uh, I may do, like, a log or something, or, like, video diary or whatever, but we'll see what happens. All right. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll see y'all next time.